for everyone listening, you know, just to sit with, to simmer a little bit, all right? Y'all okay with that? And this question isn't only for the young people, it's for the parents too. So everybody, please pay attention. So the question today is going to be, are you answering the call? All right, I'm going to say it again just in case you missed it. The question that we're trying to answer today is, are you answering the call? So for those of you who might not know me, which I know most of you do, but my name is Angelique Knowles, and I recently just turned 24 last week Friday. Do I have any October babies? Or is it just me? Oh, welcome. Hello. <laughs> we're not the best. I'm not saying that, but <laughs> so I turned 24 last week Friday, right? And I can boldly stand up here and tell you that I have chosen to answer the call. And not just any call, but the call God presented me with and the call he presents us all with. You know that he presents us all with the same call, right? All right, no matter how different it looks, we all have the same call to answer. But I know you might see me up here and be thinking like, boo, to the older people, not saying that y'all old or anything, but to the older people, you might be thinking, um, you're just 24, you young, you ain't even experienced nothing yet. But to the younger folks, they probably like, yeah, you didn't been through life, I'm trying to get where you at. I can't wait to be 24 and out of my parents' house, right? Can I get an amen or no? Amen? amen? Okay. <laughs> but I want y'all to know that answering this call was literally the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I mean, this is my second time speaking up here and my belly breaks down like every <laughs> night before I have to go. So like the last time I spoke, my belly broke down the night before and I was like, okay, maybe I had something bad to eat. But then last night I was like, hold on. Like, wh why is this happening to me? But anyway, too much information, sorry. <laughs> but. I want y'all to know, honestly, answering this call is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Like, it wasn't a walk in the park. If you think it is, it's not, right? So when I say this because if you saw me just a few years ago, you wouldn't be able to recognize me right now. Literally, physically, and mentally, I just wasn't myself. And I definitely wasn't who God called me to be because how many of you know you only find your true self in God? Young people, if you didn't know, you only find your true self in God. Nothing in this world for you, all right? So if I could give you a little backstory, I went from toxic relationships to bad influences to me being a bad influence to others to partying almost every single weekend. If you want to talk about shots, baby, I was where the shots were. I, were. I was the shots. I was bringing the shots, all right? So just to let y'all know, partying every single weekend. Listen, we talk about we outside, outside couldn't miss me, right to stun? Outside couldn't, outside couldn't miss me. Like, and I can go on, but I'll spare you all the details for another message, okay? We'll go a little deeper later. So basically, if I could use one phrase to describe my past version, it would be simply a mess. How many of us can confess that we've been a mess before? And I'm not talking about a little mess, baby. My life was a big mess. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen somebody that literally looks like what they've been through? Don't look at your neighbor, don't look at your friend. It's a personal question. Have you ever seen somebody that looks like their life is falling apart, that looks like they're going through a tough divorce, that looks like their marriage is falling apart, that looks like they've been crying every night because they're unhappy with their self? Have you ever seen somebody that looks like what they're going through? <laughs> but I'm just telling you that to let you know, if you saw me then, you knew without a doubt for sure that I was going through it. because. The weight, show, the weight in itself showed. So you knew for sure I was going through it. And the mess that was my life without God, it became undeniable. So have you ever been in a place where your mess was becoming undeniable? Am I the only one? So sis, it's like your mess was messing. I know we say life be life in, but the mess be messing sometimes, right? So I know the real ones can relate. We don't judge in this church. So everybody say amen. amen. <laughs> so if that was you, and if that's still you, 
I need you to listen closely, all right? Because today, I want to teach you something about messes. I want to teach you about mistakes. I want to teach you about not feeling worthy, being the one people look at a little funny or a little strange because of your past and what you're currently battling with. I want to tell you something that I know is true because I'm a product of it. Somebody say, I'm a product of it. I want you to know that when God calls you, he doesn't look at your past, but he looks at what your future can produce from it. I'm going to say that again because I don't think y'all really understand. You to listen closely. Your parents might have already gone through it, but I need you to listen closely. God doesn't look at your past, but he looks at what your future can produce from it. Amen. So who's glad that they serve a God who doesn't see your mess, but instead sees a masterpiece? Can I, get, can I get some praise that God doesn't see what you did yesterday? He doesn't judge you by what you've done last week, but he sees you as his masterpiece. Listen closely again, teens, because I need you to know God doesn't see you as just the young boy or the young girl with low self-esteem or family issues. And if y'all want to cover y'all as y'all could, but we about to get real, real. Somebody say real, real. He doesn't see you as the young boy or the young girl that gave themselves away before marriage because they didn't know their worth. Their daddy didn't love them. Their mommy didn't show them love. He's not looking at the young boy who's addicted to pornography or the young girl that got pregnant at a young age. He's not looking at that. Someone say, this is real life. This is real life. And how many of you parents know if you don't discuss these things with your children... And if you choose to push these topics under the rug, it gives the devil a what? A foothold. Because why? I've learned that sin thrives in secret. All right? Somebody say, sin thrives in secret. If you have um, a young person next to you, look at the young person and tell them, if you didn't know, Auntie Angie is telling you now, sin thrives in secret. All right, so somebody, I need somebody to say, speak up. Speak up. Speak up, up because if you don't speak to your children, then you're going to let the world speak for them, right? And children, if you don't speak up and if you don't tell your parents or somebody close to you what it is you're dealing with, then the devil is going to use that. Amen? So somebody say, speak up, because we can't allow the world to teach our children things anymore. This generation is learning too much from the world, and it's about time we change that by letting them know, by exposing them to things. Amen? Amen. Because, like I said, FYI, for your information, if you didn't know, the devil is surely not quiet. Not in these days and times, because he knows he doesn't have time to waste, right? We at a click of a button or a simple scroll through social media. Their innocence can be taken away at a click of a button. A click of a button. So God doesn't see your struggles or mistakes, but he sees the testimony that can pull other young boys out of their addiction, all right? He sees a testimony that can place other young girls back in line with their purpose. When he sees you, he's going to see a testimony that can change the world and turn it upside down. Parents, do I have any expecting parents that their children is going to turn the world upside down? It doesn't matter how it looks right now. It doesn't matter how child is acting right now I know that I'm standing on God's word that they are going to turn the world upside down so don't watch their testimony someone say don't watch their testimony you're watching them a little too hard tell them watch your own all right so I believe this is a generation that wants to be different amen that wants to stand out from the crowd a generation that will say God, if no one else at this school, if no one else at this college, if no one else in my friend group is going to answer the call, God, I'll answer it. Do we have any youth in here today that say, God, if they don't want to answer the call, it's okay, baby. God has called me to be different, but I'm going to answer the call. Amen? Amen? All right. So look at the person on the side of you and say, you better answer the call. So y'all, that was just my inter... I don't know about y'all, but that was just my introduction. But I feel the Holy Spirit stirring up young generations right now. You might see the seams may look a little empty, but there's generations in here and generations outside that is going to come in here. And we have these ones that can infiltrate the world. 
So by the time we're done today, every devil in hell is going to be scared to mess with them. Because you know why? Fear is going to have to leave today. Insecurity is going to have to leave today. Generational curses are going to have to break to, oh, today. Renewing their minds is going to start today in the name of Jesus. All right? Somebody take a stand for your children if they can't pray for themselves. Intercede for your children if, you, if they can't pray for themselves. Somebody say we in here to play the game. We have a generation to save, amen? <laughs> oh, so I want you all to know today, young people, this is for you, because I hope that the parents know the scripture. When you all go out of here today, it is my prayer that you will walk out of here knowing that no weapon formed against me will prosper in the name of Jesus. Most people, they would tell it to you plain like this. He was the one that persecuted the church had a miraculous encounter with God on the road to Damascus and was converted not just into a Christian, but his name was converted from Saul to what? Paul. His name was converted from Saul to Paul. So those who didn't catch it the first time, Saul is Paul. Okay? All right. So some consider him to be even the greatest slash most influential apostle in the Bible. Somebody that's killing God's people that wanted to trap God's people. He became the most influential and greatest apostle in the Bible. Paul wrote half of the New Testament. That's 13 books in the Bible were written by him. A man that killed and was trying to trap God's own people. So remember when I said God takes masses and make them masterpieces? I think Saul was the perfect example of that, isn't he? So it might be shocking to believe, but let's look at the scripture, all right? Let's dissect it. So it says, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples, which means he didn't only want to imprison God's people, but he was threatening them with death. So Saul knew he was traveling on the road to Damascus, and he wasn't trying to miss any opportunities to, to capture God's people. So notice how Saul, before he came to know Christ, was determined to find God's people. Before he came to, new, to know Christ, he was determined to find God's people. But we don't even want to tell our friends that we go to church. And we're Christians, right? So as Christians, we tend to miss so many opportunities to seek those that are lost. But you know, I ain't trying to get too deep in our business this morning. I think I got a little too deep already. So all I'm saying is, Saul clearly wasn't letting nobody slide in that time. He wasn't letting nobody slide. If he see you, off with your head, and that's it. All right? So Saul went to the high priest to ask him for a letter to authorize him imprisoning any Christians that he might find on the road to Damascus. So as you can tell, Saul was serious about what he thought he was called to do. Anybody serious about their call? So this was such a revelation for me because when I was studying this part of the text, you know, you ever read a verse and you're like, God, I have questions. Like, I have questions because it's a lot that you're giving me and I need, like, some answers back. So I was reading this and I was like, God, are you coming for me? Because I feel like you're trying to come for me right now. Because before Christ, I mean, we endure the struggles of life. Right? Anybody knew how they was before Christ? Didn't the struggles be real? So we deal with heartbreaks, with friends talking about you, but smiling in your face, dealing with a job or a boss that manipulates you and talks down to you, dealing with a boyfriend that clearly isn't worth your time. I mean, we be riding. We be riding for him. You, you riding for those friends. You riding for that company. And I mean, till the wheels fall off, you riding. Till the wheels, if you can't say amen, just say ouch. But as soon as we come to know Christ, we only ride in if the ride's smooth. That's when we want to ride, right? <laughs> no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. No. No. All right? <laughs> but how many of you know in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 58, God calls us to be what? Steadfast and immovable in what he has called us to do no matter the circumstance. So you don't have to be afraid. You don't talk to the enemy like, oh no. You talk to him and you command the room. You command what it is that you want to see. That's how you approach it. So I don't know about you, but we can't be letting the enemy go harder than us, right? All right. 
So the first principle for answering the call is going to be we have to answer the call what? Boldly. We have to answer the call boldly. Somebody say bold. And I'm not only saying that because, you know, that's the theme for National Youth Month. It just so happens to line up. But thank you, Holy Spirit. But when God is calling you to something, how are you going to let the devil show you up? When we're in the workplace, how are you going to let the devil show you up and rag you? When you're around your friends group and you're supposed to be the light, how are you going to let them try to dim it? How that works? You're supposed to be the light. You're supposed to be the salt of the earth. You're called to be different. You're called to stand out, not to tremble when trouble comes. All right? Someone say, I'm done with the trembling. Now, if your knee is still a little weak, tell them, lock up. Lock up. <laughs> but no, clearly, the Bible says, be strong and courageous, right? So it is my prayer that this generation rises up to answer their call from God with boldness with boldness you will answer the call that they would be able to open up their mouths and declare the work of the lord from the youngest child to the oldest parent in this room that they would be bolder than their parents ever were that they would be bolder than their grandparents ever were that's the kind of generation we're supposed to be raising up so this generation is going to set the standard I made the declaration. You are going to set the standard when it comes to answering God's call on your life. Someone say, I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer it. If you sit next to your parent, tell them, don't worry, mom. I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer it. Auntie Ange is convincing me the Holy Spirit is working through her today because why? I'm going to answer it. Someone say, I'm going to answer it. So since we got that out of the way, let's look at what happened next in the text, all right? So Acts 9, verses 3 through 9, and it says, As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. How many of you know God can change your life suddenly? In a blink of an eye, everything can change. So he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul asked him, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied, verse 6. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. How many of you know when God touches your life, your friends are going to be what? Speechless. Your family is going to be what? Speechless. <laughs> so they heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days, he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. So the second principle we're going to look at for answering the call is you can't answer the call while distracted. Somebody look at your name and say, wake up, wake up. If you're sleeping in church, wake up. <laughs> uh, and, and you need to tell them, look back at them and tell them, friend, Friend, don't look back. Don't get distracted. You need to focus in this season. So the first thing I thought about when reading this part of the text was, God, why did you call Saul's name twice? And why did this encounter have to happen on the road to Damascus? And one more question, God. Why did he have to be blind for three days? Like, God, God these are questions that I need to know. I need to know because you're a specific God, so I need specific answers for your word, right? So now I know back in the days when my mom or dad called my name once, you know, I would try to ignore and pretend I didn't hear it. Anybody have some ignorers in the room? Any parents could say amen. amen. <laughs> I mean, they have on ears on Like, you ain't called them five times. Mommy, just say ouch. <laughs> and some of us, I mean, your parents saying amen, but parents, y'all, as auntie, y'all parents on the first, okay. Okay. <laughs> but y'all for real. So if, if my mommy called my name once, I'm like, okay, maybe she didn't really need me like that. It's cool. But if she called my name twice, I'm like, hold on, babe, maybe she does need me a little bit. Okay. So I guess it's just me and mommy. <laughs> so let me ask y'all another question, and the teens especially. And you can be honest. I'm going to play y'all a little scenario, and I need y'all to pay attention. All right? So don't worry, parents. Y'all are going to be fine. 
don't don't front for your parents here. We need to know. I need to know the answers, all right? So if this song was playing from TikTok and ice cream truck, you know, plus by you. If you know anything but the instrumental, get saved. Somebody tell your neighbor, get saved. <laughs> Anybody know this viral TikTok song? No, or is it just me? No, we know it a little bit. Okay, okay, cue the cut the music, cut the music. All right. Who say we can't have fun in church? Who say we can't make church fun? All right, so let's pay attention here. So, you know, an ice cream truck comes, you're outside, it's a hot, hot day. You happen to have $5 in your pocket, right? So you say, oh, wow, start doing a little TikTok dance, and you, you muggling over to the ice cream truck because you're like, what, I got $5, I'm blessed, highly favored. Let me go get an ice cream because it's hot, right? <laughs> Whom, how many of y'all could go to the ice cream truck? If y'all, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, but I want y'all to think at that same time, your parents begin calling you to them. At the same time you're about to go get your ice cream, your parents say, hottie, hottie, hey, hey, come here. And in your mind, I know if my mommy calling me, I know she calling me for one or two things. You calling me to wash the dishes, you calling me to clean up my room, or something boring like that, and I ain't into that. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not into that up to this day, all right? So, <laughs> So let me know what y'all think. Which call are you gonna answer? So isn't it like God to let you lead yourself right into an encounter with him and you don't even know it? How many persons when they got saved, you didn't even know that was about to happen? Majority of us, right? You were like, hold on God, you calling me, really? Oh, you, okay, all right, now I can, now I can go there. <laughs> so God had to take away Saul's sight as well in order for him to gain true clarity. So Saul wouldn't have been able to see God clearly unless his old way of looking at things was taken from him. Because once God gets you out of that place that distracts you and he calls you what? Twice? That, that must mean he is speaking to get your full attention. He is calling you twice so there's no way you can miss it. Tell him don't miss the call. And as I studied, I saw a pattern of people God called twice. And two of those persons were found in Exodus 3, verses 4, when God calls Moses' name twice in verse 10. God tells him that he will go to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt. Moses was promoted from keeping the flock of Jethro to being the person God used to deliver his people. In Genesis 46, verses 2, God calls Jacob's name twice, and God tells him he was being promoted to being a what? A great nation, according to verse 3. So then, there's no doubt about it. Get ready. When God calls your name twice, know that he is getting ready to elevate you. He is getting ready to promote you. He is getting ready to level you up. Somebody say level up. He is getting ready to pull you from what had you captive and set you free. So tell your friends, you can look at me funny now. Tell them you can look at me funny now because of my mess and because of my mistakes. But just know, because of this mess I made, because I've been so distracted with the things of this world, God is getting ready to call my name twice. Someone say twice. And when he calls my name twice, I want you to keep looking at me. Tell your haters, keep looking at me. Mm -hmm. Tell them, keep the same energy. Keep the same energy. The persons that gave up on you, the persons that thought you wouldn't make it, don't stop looking now, because God said he would prepare a table before me in the presence of my, en my enemies. So if you see them looking, just say, God is getting ready to call my name twice. <sighs> Ooh. So God said he would prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And I want you to know that what God is getting ready to do in your life is going to be momentous. You might not see it now. They had to wait a little while back in the Bible before the momentous thing happened, right? But it is going to be unforgettable when it does happen. So parents, I'm talking to you all again, try not to look at your kids sideways when they acting up. Because the more they act up, the more God will call them out. 
the more God will pull them away from the distractions, the more God will blind them so that they can fully surrender and rely on his power. Parents, sometimes you just have to leave your children in God's hands. And trust that the foundation that I would have hoped you built for them wouldn't fall flat because that's not the God we serve. Someone say, I got to focus, I got to focus. So we can't answer the call if we're distracted by culture, if we're listening to certain things and certain people. And hold on, I'm about to get a little bit more in your business. If we're watching other people's statuses all day long, distraction. Comparing their life to ours all day, distraction. If we're scrolling through TikTok or Instagram all day, convicted, but distraction. <laughs> Someone say, get real. And these are all of the distractions in this day and time. And if we give into these distractions, we will not only miss the call of God in our lives, but we will miss the overflow that he has for us. So the first principle for answering the call is answer the call what? Boldly. Second principle for answering the call is you can't answer the call while distracted. So let's look at verses 10 through 16, and I'm almost done. So in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. And the Lord called to him in a vision. Lord, who knows the season that this was in, right? Imagine you in a season of things just going haywire. And you hear God call you in this season. And you're like, God, please. God, please. I don't want to be a part of this season. Like, why are you calling me right now? Why you couldn't call me last week? Some of us just be like that, right? So Ananias still said, yes, Lord. So the Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. Now, I'm pretty sure when he heard the name Saul, his knees started getting a little weak, right? He said, Saul, or you mean Paul? Because <laughs> he wasn't converted yet, so I hope you're saying Paul. But it says, a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, please tell me you're talking about the Ananias down the road and not this one. Mm. So I want you all to imagine how you would have, you know, responded. So in my head, when I was reading it, I probably would have been like, Lord. <laughs> Lord. Ananias answered, like, you, like, I mean, I know you ain't crazy, right? But are you serious right now? Like, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from chief priests, from the prime ministers, from everybody that have more power than me to arrest who call on your name. And I'm one who calls on your name, right? So that's probably how he responded. So the Lord said to Ananias, go, no long talking, go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. So the third principle is going to be answer the call with obedience. So I know you might be thinking, wow. If you really churchy, you might be like, wow, that person was so judgmental. Like Ananias was so judgmental to bring up his past, right? But let's be honest, if you heard about somebody killing Christians, and you're a Christian, you would be very skeptical of their past too, right? Matter of fact, some of us would pretend like we didn't even hear God calling us for this assignment, right? <laughs> so I want you to put yourself in Ananias' shoes for a minute. Our kitties are coming in. Someone say, hi, kitties. <laughs> All right, so let's, so let's focus back on the word. So I want you to put yourself in Ananias' shoes. And imagine God, <laughs> imagine God coming to you saying that he wants to use you to restore the sight of someone that was imprisoning and murdering your people, which was God's people. You would probably ask God, like I said, God, are you really serious right now? <laughs> like, are you serious right now? Because have you not seen what he's done and what he's capable of doing? The first thing Ananias looked at was what he heard about Saul and the things he did in the past. And isn't that like us today? <laughs> I'm gonna get a little bit deeper in your business now. And isn't that like us today to can't see past people's past? Whenever that specific person's name is called, all you see is cheater, liar, backstabber, right? That's all you're seeing. 
and that person could have been saved for 10 years now and that's still all you see? <laughs> Your mom asks you, how's Susie doing? Again, in the young people business, how's Susie doing? You roll in your eyes, catching a whole attitude because you don't want what, what Susie did to you to, you know, <laughs> you can't let the past go. And parents, that's why you need to be careful and set examples for these young children because when we see what they're doing, they probably just do it because that's what you do. But I don't mean to get deep in your business. <laughs> so as soon as God calls us to somebody that's a little uncomfortable, we go back and forth with God. As soon as he places someone in your life who to you seems raggedy and ratchet, we are quick to bring up their past. Someone say, get out of the past. Of the past. <laughs> but baby, if you didn't know, I'm here to tell you, every one of us has a past. Someone say amen if you know you have a past. And I don't care how good you look in church today or how dressed up you go to school, you have a past that's not pretty. Even our young people. You have a past your parents may not know about that doesn't look pretty. And if you act like you don't, <laughs> trust me, God is good at giving reality checks. God is great at giving them. So God will send someone to remind you that you do. Anybody appreciate flashbacks from God? No? Yo, look at everybody saying, mm, no, I don't want it. No. God said you're going to get it because you need to humble yourself. Because if you saw me back then in my Saul moment and you see me now in my Paul moment, you would see what God's grace did. You would see what God's love did. Can I get a standing ovation and a praise for God and what he's done in your life, for him saving you, for him going the extra mile, from putting you out of, of Satan's grip? Can I get a praise for God who changes things? My God. Some of you still thinking that your flashbacks are in you, but baby, reality check, it was you. I mean, I had my 24th birthday. Let me just tell you a quick story. I had my 24th, I wasn't gonna say it, but let me say it. Cause yeah, so I had my 24th birthday, like I said, last week Friday, and oh, you know, everybody posting, you know, everybody's post you up on your birthday and they posting inspirational things and you know, oh my goodness, I'm so glad that you've grown. And you know, you have one friend that just don't respect how far God has brought you from. <sighs> and you know, clearly you and that one friend, y'all ain't really talking that much, you know. They, don't really, they may not really know what's going on. So anyway, long story short, somebody, you know, posted this old video of me, you know, chugging back a whole bottle. Young people close the ears for this one. I lie, open them up. A whole bottle of Hennessy, and I was like, and they posted it on Instagram, on WhatsApp. I said, oh my goodness, God, you brought me from a mighty long way. And in that moment, I had to humble myself and I was like, yeah, that's where I was. So you could see where God has brought me from now. Some of y'all need friends like that to, to remind you this is where you was. Come down from your high horse, this is where you was. Look at your neighbor and say, wake up. Cause today you get in a reality check from the Lord. <laughs> so, if you stay stuck in this cycle, <laughs> come pay attention, pay attention, bring it back. <laughs> so, if you stay stuck in this cycle and it leads to you being disobedient, you'll miss your call every time. And with that, you can miss the blessing God has for you. So I pray today that Saul's conversion teaches us not to judge anybody on what they're going through or been through. <laughs> because God can use those persons to reach people. Listen to this, listen to this. God can use those persons to reach people you could never reach. He gave persons a story for a reason, to reach people you could never even begin to reach. So don't judge them by what they've done. Come on. Y'all better get real in here. The Holy Spirit is speaking, Lord, thank you. So what I'm saying is don't count anybody out. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, don't count me out. Because you don't know what God is calling that person to. You don't know where that person could be in the next five to 10 years. You don't know. That's why forgiveness is so important. We lack forgiveness in the church today. <sighs> My God. 
Uh, but what do I know? I'm only 24, right? Uh, so somebody say, I'm called to it. If you're scared, don't say nothing. So let's do it again. Somebody say, I'm called to it. All right. So as I close, we'll see what Ananias did in verse 17. All right. And you can start playing some music underneath me. So in verse 17, it says that then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 18 says, immediately, something like scales. Somebody say scales. Something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. So pay attention because this is what true obedience looks like. This is what true surrender looks like. This is what grace and love looks like. This is what giving somebody a second chance looks like. This is what forgiveness looks like. Because although you persecuted my, my brothers, although you persecuted my chosen people, I'm gonna use you. I'm gonna use you and show you how you're gonna suffer for my name's sake. <laughs> so God called Ananias and Ananias was obedient. Ananias answered the call. Ananias didn't envy or question why God called someone who is persecuting Christians rather than calling him. Because if we're honest, some of us in here are Ananias. And some of us are here are in our Saul. Alright? So don't be scared to answer the call God gave you. Alright? He gave each and every one of us a call from the first touch team to speaking to worship. Don't you envy somebody else's call and what they're doing. Because when you envy it, I hope you're ready to, to, to give what this call takes. <laughs> like, me, like me last night, a belly break down. <laughs> so Ananias may have not known what God was doing through him in that moment. He didn't know that because of him answering the call and being obedient, that generations and generations would be saved because of that one act of obedience. Up until now in 2022, we would be reading calls and verses and chapters and scriptures. He didn't know by that one moment of obedience because he touched Paul, Saul, that that would open up the gate for him receiving overflow as well. Someone say amen. Someone say God use me. So what I'm trying to say is, and I think this is the last time I'm going to get in your business, but you need to stop hating on what God called someone else to do and start being obedient to what he's called you to do. So I didn't have it up there on the screen, but I feel like that's very profound. So if you have your notes, take it down. Stop hating on what God called someone else to do and start being obedient to what he's called you to do. So because of Ananias and Saul's obedience, Saul's past catapulted his future. So God said, Saul, instead of killing the church, I'm sending you to multiply the church. And the people that were your enemies will be your friends. And the people who were your friends will hate you. So be careful with how, how you handle people now. Be careful with how you're handling school now, children. Be careful with how you speak to your parents now. Because what you do now will catapult your future. And you don't want it to be catapulted in the wrong direction. And the text says, immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. So in that moment, the scales of hate began to fall. I want everybody to close their eyes in this moment. And just picture your sight changing, the way that you view others changing. Picture it. So I want y'all to open it up. And God, it is my prayer that as they open up their eyes, God, that the scales 
of hate would fall. The scales of brokenness would fall. The scales of jealousy would fall. Trying to fit in is falling right now in the name of Jesus. The addictions you're dealing with secretly is falling in the name of Jesus. Condemnation is falling. Not feeling loved or worthy is falling because I'm finally seeing the way God sees me. And when the scales begin to fall, don't forget where God has brought you from. Because God has a unique story that can only be told through you. So don't ever rob persons of your testimony. Is there anybody in here that can testify of how God turned your past around for the good? Can anybody testify? Because I feel like we need another flashback moment. Can I get at least five people to say that this is my testimony? Everything you've walked through will be a part of your testimony. What happened to you when you were young, what your teacher said to you, how they treated you like you were when you were the odd one out, the people that talked about you, what they did to you, and even the way you might have hurt others. It's all going to be for your testimony. It's all going to be for God's glory if you choose to answer the call. Your testimony will set teenagers free. So God is calling some bold people in the season to speak up because there's nations that need to hear your voice. So don't fight God when he's calling you.